Okay, here on the Weekly Pass in Las Vegas Super Bowl with our good friend Roddy Rod. And he was late. It's fine because he's a Hall of Famer <laughs> and stuff, so he, it's fine. But, Rod, we don't want to just talk about X's and O's. We want to kind of, like, get to know you better. <laughs> <laughs> get to know me better. <laughs> we want to know well, the well, you know, what, Listen, listen. Rod First of all, I'm here for a really good campaign. Oh, okay. Talk, the, talk about that. the DEA. It's called the One Pill Can Kill campaign. Oh, this. So it's, it's when you're looking at the deaths in the U.S. with not just kids, but across the board, across the board with drug poisoning. Oh, yeah. And 300 kids or 300 individuals die a day oh, last yes. year. And I'm with the with John from the DEA, and some of his stats are just mind blowing. Where are you talking about like fentanyl and all the, yeah. Fentanyl is the key because they're lacing everything with fentanyl. and I know. I don't know what's in it, yeah. And everything looks the same. But if you're buying it on social media, it's not. What are you buying on social media? People buy drugs on social media? So like, say you go to your platform. Absolutely go to You go to TikTok. You go to, you know, IG, right? You go to, you go to X. You go to all of them. And you can, things will pop up where you can buy painkillers. Or at least it looks like really. Outside. I don't get that on my but feed. But as but you can block some of that stuff, and I don't know. Exactly wow, what that's all crazy. These kids are, or how these people are doing it, but that's one of the main things that we want to give out. That let's make let's be smart. Let's make yeah. wise decisions. Let's talk to our kids earlier than educate than before. Yeah, and educate our kids that hey, listen, just because you're saying that stuff on social media doesn't mean it's real. Doesn't yeah. mean it's going to be legit. If you're not getting it from your licensed pharmacist or a licensed physician, it's not real. It's not real. And you don't know what's in it. And you don't, you have no idea what's in it. And from the ages of 14, 18 to 45, more drug poisonings and drug abuse, people have died. That's horrible. And you're, you're a grandpa, you're a father. So this is like, it's, like it is, it's, it's important for you. It's eye opening yeah. when I gave me the numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, yeah, I'm a part of it. I'll wow. be a part of it. Good for That's you. good. So this entire week, you're scheduled to promote this cause. No, today is from six thirty this morning until two thirty this afternoon. Um, we're talking about the cause. Awesome. All right. So grandkids. He's grandpa. a grandpa, Joseph. and I always like kind of freak out that you're a grandpa That's because crazy. you don't grandpa? look like yeah, yeah you're like a good, a good looking grandpa. I mean, <laughs> so, I, so I got a 13 year old who okay. lives with us, okay, and he's taller than me okay. already. He wears a size 14 shoes, a little basketball player. Then we have a nine-year-old that lives with his mom in California. And then we have a two-year-old that lives here in Vegas. So we we enjoy our kids. We're like the 13-year-old is kind of like our kid anyway. Yeah. Like we've raised him. Sure. Yes, is my daughter's son, but we raised him. Right, of course. I'll let him call me dad. Oh, dad, not grandpa. No, call me dad. So oh. so what kinds of activities in Las Vegas do you do with your grandkids? There's so well, much he's on the playing, strip. He's playing basketball uh -huh. all the time. No football. No, no football. He's all basketball. Long. Do you want him to play two sports? Because that's the thing now is making sure nah, they play know, two sports. He, like you, you know, did track and he, football. If he wants to play football, I will let him. Yeah. But I'm not going to push him to say, hey, I sure. need you to play two. He loves basketball. Okay. He loves. He knows Fantastic. all the basketball players. He knows old school basketball players. I remember. Oh, you told me about him. I mean, he, he loves basketball. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to force him to do something that maybe I did. Right. Uh, and, you know, I had success doing multiple sports. But if he wants to focus in on one, I'm letting him focus in on one. As long as he's a good person, good kid, yeah. good in school, I'm good with everything else. But is that hard? Because you're a coach as well. And don't you want to kind of sometimes, like, like, kick his ass? You know what I mean? I, I do <laughs> in basketball. But I'm not a – like, I know basketball, but I don't know it like I – like, my buddies know it. Yeah. Like, my, I had a buddy here the other day, and we took him over to the gym. Yeah. And he was like, he texted me as soon as he left. He said, I need you to bring him to Fort Wayne on spring break. He said, because he's going to be a really good player. And I was like, do you want to go to Fort Wayne on spring break? And you're going you're gonna to work out twice a day, four days yeah. a week, or four days in that week. And he's like, he said he wants to do it. So I'm like, so that. Okay, there. On his own, do, he wants to. Let yep. him do stuff like that and that growth that he can have. Is what you know. I'm here for. Okay, so what's the what what what's this? Because you I didn't have it keeps. To, I had the goatee. I practice. know you had That's the goatee. I like the goatee, but now this is just this. And then I cut this. But this was longer just <laughs> recently. It was longer. I I was going to braid it. But it's done. No, oh, Rod. Braid, braid, right? <laughs> like, but I, I was like, I'm trying I'm, to think I, of that artist. But then that when I did it, and I turned around, and my wife said, "Oh, I like that." Right. She likes the beard. She likes this. She likes this better than the goatee. So really, I, guess, I, I guess like the goatee. Say, well, I don't know if it was, you know, 
if she looked at me and said, "Oh, you look different." I, now I'm a different. I'm with like, a different guy. Maybe it's, it's, it's like dress up. Right. Yeah. So I don't know what I, I don't know. Because you, I have a bunch of goats. You know, real goats. Right. You know, you're a goat. Right. You know, and now you look like one of my goats. <laughs> <laughs> it was longer, but the last two days I did cut it, and I was like, you know, what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to grow it out. I was gonna let it grow out, and I was let one of my daughters braid it. And I was like, "Now nah, I'm not gonna do that." But and the way, do you you color it in the middle? I highlight it. Oh, you yeah. highlight it? Yeah, highlight. Because you, yeah. highlight. Highlight. you it, guys highlight you yes. highlight your hair. Yes, but, but it's wait, so hi, do you have, no, no, do you put foil it, there? No, no, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting foil on my face. But what I do? So, so no, I do every probably every two months. But I, do you ever do an IG live video so people can see when you're doing that? No. Oh, that that, I, no. that would that would get funny. a lot of hits. That's too funny. I'm not, that would get a lot of hits. I don't because hits. interesting. <laughs> but it's interesting. I don't care about hits. So what? You just go like this and draw. Right here, let it sit for like 30 seconds and wash it. Out. And then wash it out. But why? But if I, but even if I, why don't you just do all I, black? Or even if I didn't, it's going to come in like this. He wants it distinguished. It looks, it's going it's it's to come in darker in the middle and right. lighter over here. Right. Do you feel like it makes you look wiser? No, because it's, like, it's like my hair. It's like on the side of my head, I got, I got like, I got more gray over here than it's darker. Oh, wait, there. that's, oh, I see. Oh, nice. Okay. I got to be honest, though. You don't age. You know, you really look really don't. good. You got good I mean, jeans. We, I, my I knees back. don't feel good. So, so Rod, <laughs> I go back. Bonnie Jill, do you remember we played the Pittsburgh Steelers, the 49ers did, for the American Bowl in Barcelona? Oh, yeah. Is that where you met DJ? Yes, I met DJ there and several Yancey yeah, Thigpen yeah. and Rod, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you the same. So oh, I except the same and I don't know if I look the same way the back then. Right? Well, when we were with the Niners, yes, when we were cheering, yeah. he was there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what else is happening now? You got I'm some off time. Off and time. Grandkids. You know. Got, Are you liking got, Vegas? I love Vegas. This is it's really country in a desert landscape. And you know, I started my foundation to football. Yes. Yes. Four years ago. And so, don't you have an event going on? Not now. Oh, Which we have an event tomorrow. Yes, that's tomorrow what I'm saying. Morning. Yeah. Well, that's with AP Scouting, all pro okay. scouting. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna we're getting into the scouting program or the scouting industry where kids, all ex players or ex coaches, are gonna grade high school kids, mm -hmm. and we're gonna watch tape where most of the people in that form right now don't watch film on their kids but it's like like when we're we're, we're looking at it and i started looking at them like they don't watch film but why not well we watch film so we're going to watch yeah. film on these kids we're going to grade them we're going to give them we're going to give them a, like a little sheet we'll say hey you need to do xyz to get better and if they do that hopefully they can get to a three star four star five mm -hmm. star and you know not spend a whole bunch of money on going to a bunch yeah. of different camps speaking of uh watching film i think i don't think people, players know that when they go from playing to coaching you're watching a whole lot of film and you i remember when i would watch a film and like we from position coach to assistant i know you were talking about how it's a lot of film that's why it's sometimes coaches shani will spend the night right yes right. i mean it's I, but at the end of the day one thing i've learned from different coaches is that you got to learn you have to know that you know you have to know who you know the team sure and it really comes down to your head coach yeah. Is your head coach a grinder? If he's a grinder, or if your team as a coordinator is a grinder, then you're going to have to be a grinder because you can't leave before he does. You can't leave before he is, That's yeah. Right. But every time I've been around coordinators, my at my as a player, mm -hmm. they would get out at, at 830, 9 o'clock. But then when I started coaching, my coaches weren't going to leave until 11. So I had to stay there until 11. That's hard when you have a family. That's and hard when you have a family. And then you got to get up the next day at 5 in the morning, and you're burning from candles from both ends of the stick. You do get worn out, and it's hard yeah. to be productive. But the game of football is not that complicated. It really isn't. You play; they do two or three more, you know, defenses or offensive plays each week. At the end of the day, they're going to keep doing the same stuff over and over and over. Sure. You just got to know to try to figure out when they might do it, and then yeah. try to teach your guys to understand football. And that's I think that's the main thing. It, it's a mental game too. Yeah, big time. It is. So, I we talked a little bit about this on the phone, but before we wrap up, because I know you have to go, um, predictions for the game. Predictions for the game. I know Mahomes. I it's going, like it's. Listen, I I understand how good Kansas City's been. I got a feeling if the Niners the defense Niners plays like they had played in the regular season, they're going to play like they did in the regular season. Okay. And they're going to get that win. And then Brock Purdy, who has been that game manager, whatever so that means, that. I'm so I hate over that. that. That he's going to get that Super Bowl victory, and because if he was a first-round pick, 
they wouldn't be saying he's a no. game manager. The story was no. different. Because it's Mr. Story, Irrelevant. That, that storyline would be so different yep. that he would be a baller. But I think he'll he'll prove otherwise in the game, mm -hmm. and I think they'll get that win. Awesome. Good. Thanks so Rob. much, Roddy. Right now you're busy, yeah, right, and we'll see you later. And, you. and it's okay if you were late. Thank it's you fine. So <laughs> Thank you. I certainly think that has a play in it. So, we got to talk about the leader part. Yeah. So leaders in the locker room. I think some people think the quarterback is always a leader in the locker room, right? Now, you, well, you told me you were. You were more the leader in the locker room. Right. You were the one that got the guys going. Sometimes Troy would be a little rough on the guys. You tried to be more. Well, of a well Troy was, Troy was, Troy was the direction. <laughs> guys, and what I mean by that is guys, like we, we all, uh, you know, Guys are going to listen to me, and that's why you'll hear them say, oh, Michael's the heart and soul. Heart and soul. Right. The heart and soul of a team, that means we go as I go. But <laughs> but I'm not going to be, when we talk about meetings at 9, I'm not coming at 855. Troy going to be there at 845. <laughs> what time are you going to be there? 902. <laughs> He's going to make a 905. You know, that's Troy. interesting. And you got to know your player. Jimmy Johnson, he knew a player, he knew me well enough to say, <laughs> hey, Meetings tomorrow at nine o'clock, eight thirty for you, Michael. Yeah. That means eight thirty for you. Get in here by nine. Now, by no, <laughs> make, make, no, make no mistakes about it. Talking about heart and soul, I've heard you mention Devo Sam, Samuel as the heart and soul dude, of that Forty Nine er offense. I love that dude, man. What should we expect from him this Sunday? Listen, uh, I, 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 I'm telling you, if ever you ask, who I just love watching. Love watching him play, love his mentality, and wish I can transport a few of him in a cowboy uniform. It's Debo Sam. Wow. It's I, everything. You saw last week, too, when that team got down, who they started going to. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's because it's the spark. I keep telling people, he's not just going to get, you get the five yards, you get eight yards on the run. That's great. But what happens is it's not just blessing your offense. Your defense is in a harsh. Now, what? Did you see that? Dude got a bad shoulder, and he looking dudes up to run them over. That's a mentality. No matter what, this game is a physical game, and every game's going to come down to physicality. Are you willing and can you withstand the physicality? And Debo is a physical dude. I just love I love it, man. And you love so, CD so, just as yeah, just as much. Yeah, I love CD. I love CD, but but Debo's a different player. He, he's a different player. CD has physical skill sets that I don't have. So does Debo, but Debo has the mentality that I have. I just want to bust your ass, run you <laughs> over. I'm not just going to beat you. I'm trying to break you. You know what I mean? Debo has that mentality. Michael, you got to be honest with me. You know, the, the Club 88, all the guys you've wore the 88 number, and I know how you are. I mean... Michael likes to be in the limelight. He likes to, you know, do you really like that everyone's, really? The, but, 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 you really but, think that, it's, you really like that someone else took your number, a Dez, and then, yeah. and then CD. I mean, obviously you took Drew's number, but do you but, really like that they're not going to retire 88 as Irvin? Because what, I. What, what have we heard? No, be but, honest okay, with me, Michael. I am trying to be honest okay. with you. Okay. You can pick any joker up in a rafter anywhere. Any player up in, up in any rafter anywhere and you tell me did you hear any about anything about his name this year why am i waiting on my death to get my flowers so you put it up in the rafters nobody even sees it nobody says anything oh you think there's it. more conversation there now no i don't think you know that's why you ask me the question <laughs> right now what are you talking about you yeah you this okay all right you ain't all right. asking me about yeah. anybody number you ain't asked nobody about hey your number retired what do you think about it Nobody gives a damn what you think about it. It's retired. <laughs> when it's actively doing things, then we can bring it That's up. That's actually a so, great so, point. So the okay, reality okay. Is, you want me to wait till I die, and I die, they say, oh, we lost Michael today. <laughs> Back to the game. That's all I get. That's all I get. This way, every Sunday when CD makes a play, they say, damn, that looked like Mike Irvin. Yeah, if that's true. If he the pass, they said, Mike Irvin wouldn't have dropped that. You see, <laughs> I'm getting my flowers every Sunday either way. They asked me about him breaking the record, you know, most hundred yards, uh, uh, most yards in the season. I said, he's not breaking my records. He is raising the 88 brand. We're on group text, all of us. I know I want to be on that. Yep. 
Why are you only on a root test because, for 8 8 club? Because Post Malone's on that. He has a to do with 8 Malone, 8. He, 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 what? Post, po, uh, when we win a Super Bowl, Post has promised to, to tattoo 8 8 on his head. Are you going to make this promise? We put you in the club. Yeah. Are you going to say, because the Cowboys are going to have a Super Bowl? What you mean? You're going to say, tattoo 8 8 right on the head of Post Malone. He is it. Post be doing some texting too. But but when we take we take CD about taking the number eighty eight the new levels we still talking about Drew Pearson yeah we ain't talking about all the great receivers who had jerseys retired we ain't saying nothing about you know you're right people would be talking about Drew much yeah Drew, nothing Drew back in Drew in the Hall of Fame right now what's up what as well Drew in the Hall of Fame because you stay alive. You stay alive. So, yeah, I'm telling you, I thought of this a long time ago. I think it's brilliant. I don't know why everybody don't do like me and go and say, y'all, get the damn jersey out of the rafter and put it on some player <laughs> so we can be talking about what's going on around here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Irv, how, was, how were the honors last night? I, I thought it was great, man. It was the, the venue. The venue was in, was, was in, just incredible. It really was. The way they set it up, where they had it, had the stage and everything. It, it really was. It, it was a beautiful evening. And they always do a great job with honors. So it was good to be there. Before we let you go, predictions for the game. Are you going to go against my Niners, or what do you think? Because the well, Niners got to show up, you know. But this is what's difficult, and this is what's yeah. real. And I'm going to give you something quick, maybe soothe you a little bit if I can. Okay. Here is what's always been the reality. Patrick Mahomes is the greatest right now that we see on the field. We'll have a debate later after his tally is done. But who has been the one to beat Patrick Mahomes? It's only been Tom Brady in the playoffs. Yeah. Maybe 2 and 0 against Patrick Mahomes and beat him in the Super Bowl. What does Tom Brady do? Tom Brady, when you saw his picture on draft day, when you saw him shoulders down, you thought he couldn't beat an ant in an ant race. When you saw what his body looked like shoulders so, down. Yeah. And just a uh, but then you see him shoulder. You, you, he plays the game shoulders up. Different dude. Yeah. And he beat Patrick Mahomes playing the game shoulders up. Josh Allen, La, uh, Lamar Jackson, they all try not only just win the game, they try to beat Patrick Mahomes personally. We noticed that. I noticed you try, that. You lot. try to out Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Rock Purdy won't have to try this. And here's where it differs. And defensively for, for the Chiefs, They've done well, the last two teams. Oh, they did the, what they did to Buffalo. Buffalo has a point of attack. It's Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. That's their only point of attack. Then look at what they did to Baltimore Ravens. They have one point of attack. Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers. That's their point of attack. The 49ers have many points to attack you with. You want to take out Christian McCaffrey, Debo going to hurt you. You want to double down on Debo, here comes Brandon Ayuk. You want but to the try defense, to take they got to check. Here comes, here comes Kittle in the defense. They got to get to the quarterback. They're not doing that, Michael. Right, right, right. But, but, but neither did Baltimore last week, but they only put up 17 points and didn't put up any in the second half. It's not just getting to the quarterback. It's taking out Travis Kelsey. Mm, yeah. You get have Patrick Mahomes running around. I just got to get him off the field on third downs, and I got to take Travis Kelsey out to do that. That's going to be the key. Bosa's going to have to step up. I'm interested to see Reed and Shanahan. The That's two, the battle. The oh, my God. The co- yeah. They're two great. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and, and what's great about it, Andy Reed was Kyle Shanahan before 1-5 got in his yeah. hands. I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it did. But Andy <laughs> Reid was Kyle Shanahan before one five got in his hands because Andy Reid had gone to Super Bowls. Andy Reid had gone through championship games, and he had lost. He had lost, and then he got the right quarterback one five, and then he won. Kyle Shanahan may now be saying, "I got my quarterback." You know what I mean? Yeah. I got my quarterback because and, and, and now it's my turn to win. So it's going to be a great game. Great matchup. Thanks, Michael. Matchup. Thanks, Michael. All right, appreciate All right. you. Wait, I didn't know you had these blue suede shoes on. Man, I got on everything. I'm always doing that. But tonight, we get out tonight. We'll have a drink tonight. I'll yeah. see you guys later. Okay. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Drop the mic. Wait, we need a picture, Michael.
Welcome back to the Weekly Pass in Las Vegas Super Bowl. We've got one of our good friends, longtime friend who's a good human. He just on and off the field. He knows how to get it done. Work done. Work, how are you, babe? I'm good. I'm good. How you been? We're good. We're so happy to have you here. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. You're hunting me down. So, yeah. Well, I mean, Anya basically stalked you. <laughs> I mean, it, illegal stalking, though. Stalked. It was legal. It's and, okay, and though. we got stuck in security because it's not so easy here. So. No, Y'all get stuck in security? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, we we did, we did. Uh, it's uh, it is a little confusing. It is confusing. Just walking around where you gotta go and and those things. So, but we we're here. Yes, we did. We found each other. <laughs> yeah, and then you know the biggest thing I want to talk about is because I just love what you have done so far at the foundation. I mean, the the homes you've given away. I mean, every year it's like it gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. And talk about first of all your mother, how it's an honor of your mother, and take it from there. You know, so, you know, now we've been programming for 26 years. We have 221 single parent families. And then uh, that's also six single fathers that we've been able to help us 20, uh, 26 years. But this all started because my mom, who was a Baton Rouge City police officer, was shot and killed in line of duty. And being the oldest of six, my mom only made $36,000 our conversations were really about the things that she wanted for us as kids. And you know, I pretty much took, you know, my mom's dream after being challenged by Coach Dungeon my rookie year to, you know, just try to help people, help other kids not go through what I went through coming up. And, you know, we've been, we started a program and, you know, 26 years later in 16 states, 30. 16 states now. 16 states 30 cities 30 markets and we just really want to continue to just grow the impact and, and help more people and we you know we have wraparound support services now as well like financial literacy uh betty's hope uh, um it's a mental health program so i have counter your futures financial literacy program and we have overall overall health and wellness program that's called scope where we buy metrics you know, frugal chef helping families cook quick and healthy meals, growing their vegetables wow. in their backyard. So, so many more initiatives than I even thought. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been much more holistic all around, just really trying to support the family all around. And when I tell people when we do the financial literacy, count on your future, it's like it's all about needs versus wants. Yeah. So if we can educate family and get them to really think about budgeting, you know, get the things that you need to live a good life and, and not, you know, you, if you want some things, you got to plan and save up for it. Put yourself in the position to get there first. So, you know, right. it's, it's all about transition, but I'm holding individuals accountable. We don't give anything, but we're kind of your future. We tell a family, if you invest up to $500, we will match up the $500 to start a savings account. So we really try to help families get started to thinking about long-term planning, not just today, but the next 30, you know, 20, 30 years of their lives so they can create some stability and long term success for their families. Fantastic. Can you share one uh, of your most rewarding stories? That's what I was wondering too. Yeah. You've done so probably, there's probably so many. <laughs> well, it's it, a one that sticks out, right? Well, I, it's, it's always good when you, you see a, a recipient sell, or, sell their home, purchase another home. And, you know, now what they've done is put themselves in a position to be much more stable and they're growing their wealth. But at the same time, it trickles down to the kids. I have a recipient who sold a home, bought another home. Her son bought his first home. Right. That's impactful. And that's learning from the, you know, his example for his mother said, really, you know, the things you instilled after a while of um, just watching a parent or you know watching a parent do something you learn some things and you know try to sometimes we try to mimic what we see mm -hmm. and th this is just a great example and i have a lot of other examples of kids being able to you know now you know have the confidence doing performing better in school you know actually going to college and wanting to become something other than what they see around them so it's it's uh it's positive where do you want to see the foundation go what else would you like to add to it oh obviously i'm visionary I, I, 
big picture. We want to grow. We want to continue to grow the impact, but we want to get more partnerships, more people involved so that, you know, we can touch more families. I mean, you can't do things on your own. It takes a village. It takes a community. So we all need to come together, but I want to be able to just provide some stability so that everyone talks about generational wealth, right? To get to that point, it takes generations to really build generational wealth. So we have to start somewhere and, you know, we can start with home ownership, but now also educating them because on things they don't know, if they need help with credit and, you know, if they want to improve on the job site and so forth, that I, I want to be able to help them. And, yeah. you know, so I got to the point where I started another entity called WD Communities, where now we build housing, not just for single parents, but just for families, period. Oh. And we work with workforce and underserved communities. So I believe we need to make sure people are in a mixed economic community so they have a better balance of life and you know, just give them opportunity to prosper. And I try to, I want all those families to go through all the support services that we provide for them at the charity. Mm -hmm. I want them to participate and let's build healthier minds, healthier bodies, so we have a healthier community overall. Mm -hmm. You've had such a successful career in the NFL. With rookies entering into the league, what would your advice be as far as the community and the philanthropic side? Mm -hmm. Giving back, how yeah. important is that? Well, I think it's important. Uh, I wouldn't start a nonprofit you know, early on, I would tell the guys, you're going to make a lot of money. Figure what your passion are. Figure out what exactly. you're passionate about. Exactly. And, you know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's a lot of nonprofits out there. We're all competing for dollars. So why not figure out what you're passionate about and, and see if someone in the community or there or another nonprofit that you could potentially partner with to really help you fulfill your mission and then you still have a lot of say so and mm -hmm. those things in it so that it grows and you can impact individuals because yeah. we, we all have a lot of we have a lot of nonprofits, and everybody's competing for the same dollar yeah, I, and you know i'm not saying that you shouldn't start something that you you want but be strategic about how you mm -hmm. do it and how you go about it so that we're not duplicating services in the same communities but we're, we're providing resources to help the community grow. And you can still make a huge, huge impact and a lot of influence by giving direction and, and providing leadership to organizations that need it. Not everyone can be a war done, but this is great advice. <laughs> uh, Warwick, yeah. uh, we want to get into the game. Okay, oh so your box, they, they got a little close, you know, played, played the R-Niners. Uh, when you see Christian McCaffrey, what do you see? Do you see anything that resembles you? Because I actually one time asked him, and he actually said that you're one of his people he watched and kind of implemented. I don't know if you know that. No, I, yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. but I watch him, and I, I do like his style. He's tough, hard-nosed. He's, he's a little bit more physical because he's, he's a lot bigger than I am. But I, I do like his style, and, and he's, most importantly, versatile. Yes. He can block, mm -hmm. catch, run. He has, you know, really good speed, great quickness. And I mean, it's like he shows up. We don't have, a lot of times we don't have guys that show up mm -hmm. when it's time. And he's one of those guys that shows up consistently, yeah. consistently. And it's in his blood, you know, with his father Ed, yeah. <laughs> you're playing in the National Football League. But I just think his passion to be the best player that he could be. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I like watching him run the ball. And he, well. offensive player of the year, should he have won MVP? Because he was in that talk. Well, everything today is about the quarterback. I know, I know. Right. And about, you know, unfortunately, you know, the quarterback, they, they're they going to make plays, but it takes a team to be successful. Of course it does. So, you know, if quarterbacks win it, they need to give all the praise to their teammates, to the linemen, to the people around them, because if they weren't, you know, great players, exceptional players, it just wouldn't be the same. I mean, their performance wouldn't be the same. It's so you, interesting. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, no. As I'm listening to you, you and Christian McCaffrey do remind me of one another because you're these feisty running backs, but yet you're so very chill when you're out of a game. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Well, I am I am laid back. You're very so. laid back. <laughs> You've always been laid back. I, yeah, I'm, I'm laid back, but, you know, I 
have been I played football since I was seven years old outside, you know, and, and you're watching older older generation like Tony Dorset was my idol. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to mimic his game, but I was in love with football so much. I watch football. I just watch different teams and you know to understand. And then as I got older, I started to learn more about the game and really understand defenses and I mean, I, listen. I was I was a high school quarterback, so yeah. I, I, it helped me understand coverages and you know where guys are going to be. And I think all of that stuff is really just transition to seeing the game. You know, I'm able to look down the field and, and understand what's what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just reacting. Yeah. I, I always just tried to react off guys, but I had a good understanding where everyone was going to be. If the hole is going to be there. I had to work on having patience and it's just a lot of yeah. stuff that goes into it. But uh, the game is different today because it's very much so. Everything is outside. Nothing's downhill. And when I was playing, I, mean, I had to prove that I can run downhill. Yeah. I was never a featured back. Yeah. I was always sharing carries. So, you know, I was. I wrote a book called Running for My Life. That's literally what I was doing was running, running for my for your life. life. So, yeah. And you talk about splitting carries. You know, the fullback position is not very apparent anymore. They're like, where's the fullback position? But you had yeah. Mike Allstott, right? Yeah, You're Mike in good Allstott. hands with Allstott. And now you look at Juice with the 49ers. Yeah. And he's one of the prominent fullbacks because there's not a lot of other fullbacks. Oh, yeah. Ninth Pro Bowl in a row. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how if you look at evolution, the running back, it's all about the tailback now. It's it's not The fullback's not even around anymore. I know. It's, it's, it's sad. Those guys added so much value yeah you know for us as you know being a lead guy going in and it just really cleaning things up helping the, the linemen but mm -hmm. they played an intricate part in uh, of my success and really helping me go to different places i mean mm -hmm. i'm using my hand to go to you know the, the hole and those things but i had to trust the people up front and you know with the linemen but definitely the fullback because they were difference makers. Right. You know, but you like would have had a lot more. Your numbers would have been a lot more inflated, right, if there was no All-Star. <laughs> well, I, but when I, I shared carry with yeah. All-Star in Tampa, but also in Atlanta with TJ. TJ, yeah, yeah. So forth. But, you know, I, I rushed for what? I'm 37 yards shy of 11,000 yeah. rushing. I got over 15,000 yards total offense. I mean, what more? I played, I, you know, I. I did the best to, yeah. you know, the, I, I did what I could when I, when I, absolutely. I'm just saying that there was not the me. fullback as prominent, like, a, you know, it is, yeah, you know, I, then I know. it would have been totally different. Well, the game's you know, different. Yeah. The game is different in this area here. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we find your book? Well, I mean, you can Amazon it, whatever, Amazon, but it's called, yeah. it's been out since 2009 yeah. called running for my life. And it just really talks about, I like my that story. title. Yeah. It just talks about my story. Yeah. And, does you it know, go the all the way back to when you're a little Warwick? Well, it talks about, you know, the tragedy with my mom yeah. and how I had to adjust things. And I'm sure I can write another book now because yeah. it's been it's been so long. Yeah. And a lot of things have, you know, a lot of life lessons and mm -hmm. those things that, you know, we always want to help each other grow and, and yeah. educate each other. So before we let you go, we have to get a prediction. Uh, I mean, I know you're more. I mean, you're more of an NFC guy. So, I mean, but are well, you going NFC played, or are you going AFC? I, I know. Yeah, I never played for an AFC team. No, I so, know. Yeah, I'm more of an NFC. But the reality of it is, is um, I don't really even care. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. know a lot of people are like, I don't care. Yeah, well, but if you, you know, don't have a team, a dog right. in the fight, you're like, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you watch the game. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. But you're just yeah. gonna watch it. You're not oh, gonna I'm, like I'm gonna watch the game. I'll watch it like us who are yeah. gonna be crazy. You like, guys are gonna be crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm gonna be chill. But you're watch, calm I'm even if you gonna... had a dog in the fight. You're not like me and Tanya cussing and yelling and Well yeah. you kinda right on that one. You kinda yeah. right on that yeah. one. But it's you, all right. know, it's you gotta all right. stay We're... calm under pressure. I'm right. not calm under pressure. I'm a psychopath under pressure. Well yeah. we don't we could talk about that. We got some counseling coming for Oh, by the way. Mardi Gras. I know. Mardi Gras. Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same. Not it's not the same. same. No, nah, it's. What's your favorite? What's your favorite dish? Um, beignets. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be an etouffee, crawfish etouffee. I love gumbo. I cook gumbo. I cook it you all. You do? 
Yeah, they call me Chef by your homeboy. Oh, okay. you know you know how to cook. Yes, ma'am. I, I I don't know how to cook, so this is good. No, no, I, I do know how to cook. That I, I, I cook crawfish etouffee, Ooh, gumbo, yummy. and I, I all I, that I get spice. All of my stuff from Louisiana. I love it. Yeah, right. So I learned a lot from my grandmother. Uh, that means you got the good recipes. Got the great recipes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I I do what I can. You I have to cook for us because I don't cook. I'm a great ordering in person. I, I can pick up really well too and deliver. <laughs> really good. I got you. Okay. I got you. Good. I got you. All right. Thanks, Warren, for stopping by. We appreciate you always. Oh, no, I know. Appreciate you guys. Good Thank to see you, you my friend. Yes, ma'am. We'll be back with more at Super Bowl Radio Row. Welcome back. We're here at Radio Row, Super Bowl, Las Vegas. And now we're joined by my good friend. <laughs> Me and Tanya are here, Emmett Smith. Emmett, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are you doing? It's early. Well, you feeling good? I mean, you feel like you're kind of like looking sharp. It's Friday morning. We've been here all week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling good. I mean, I got some about five hours of sleep last night because <laughs> I, I was up at 530 or 5 o'clock this morning. Wow. Because oh. I had to get ready. I got some stuff I, had, stuff I had to do. So I was on the air this morning with Morning Joe. And I think that was about 6, 619 this morning. And so I did a little workout before I... I was going to say, I bet he worked out. Yeah, Good I did a little bit of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that probably makes you feel that better. That is the yeah. one thing I am missing is my regular workouts. Right. Yeah, it makes you tired if you don't work out. This right here, this routine will make you miss things. Yes. 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 Because. Like important things. Yeah, like, like emails I'm missing and text messages that are like important. The simpler yeah, things, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, Emmett, you're here every year. And I got to start off with our Cowboys because I know how upset you were just like I was after that loss. What I mean, when you see how well they do during the regular season. <laughs> Why can't they translate that into the playoffs? Like, what go, what happens? Because I mean, you guys were able to do. Like, what is it? Why is there the light off the switch on and off? Here, here's here, here's the situation. Uh, when you talk about the way we did it, the way we did it, we were always in a grinder, even in practice, and we went into games knowing that we had to be physical up front, meaning blocking and tackling on the defensive side as well as the offensive side. We had to be physical. We had to be dominant, and we had to be on the grind in the competitive spirit, even in practice. That's just the way it was. Our practices was just as hard, if not harder than some games. Pearson said the same they thing. They were harder than harder than some games. So when we went in the game, we were already prepared to play at a level that's pretty high. But our Cowboys right now, if they're not prepared to play at that level, you're going to get the, the some good, the some bad, because they're going to beat you because they got enough talent, and they can do that. And then when you run up against a team like the 49ers and they come and hit you with that energy. Then it's a different ball game. And it's a different game. And when the Eagles come hit you with that energy, then yeah. it's a different game. When the court bounced back at you. Mm -hmm. And they could have, they should have won the game, but they shot themselves in the foot. So you didn't win the game. So you think, you had, okay, we got we got one. Yeah. But when you get in the playoff, you can't just summon that energy. You got to play with that level of intensity, that level of focus for the entire season. So when you need it, it's already there. You don't have to like, I need to bring this today. No, you bring that every that, day. That and sense. you don't have to be, when you're ready, you don't have to get yeah. ready. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I always reflect back, uh, the Dallas Cowboys this year, they're always so electric every year, year over year. But I reflect back to when the 49ers and Dallas, we had that rivalry back in mm -hmm. the 90s. It was intense. And it's the championship did, game was the Super Bowl. Every, <laughs> and, and I can, I remember I, yeah. I was with the 49ers for seven seasons. Almost every year, it was Dallas and Niners, and it could have gone either way. Right. It, it's it's just disappointing for the fans to see them let down through these playoffs these last few years. That's who I feel for the most. I mean, forgetting my own feelings, I could. I mean, I'm thinking about the millions of people that that fall for the okie doke every year. This is our year to go to Super Bowl. This is our year. We got a great team. Blah, 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 blah. Our season every year, yeah. and it's like an illusional thing, and so it's not like being realistic with ourselves mm -hmm, and sure. so when i'm looking at it i just see i see great players i hate to use the word great i see players that have the potential to become great players there we go but i don't see i don't see them taking ownership of what that really means mm -hmm. i mean i didn't have to worry about urban 
on, on, on Saturday or Sunday being prepared to play. I didn't have to worry about Troy. Troy yeah. I didn't have to worry about my your, offensive your line. line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we concentrated and focused on not making mistakes to beat ourselves. Mm -hmm. These guys continue to make the same daggone mistakes week in and week out. I don't care where you are on the offensive yeah. line, left tackle or right tackle. You're making the same mistakes. You're not focusing. Yeah. And you're not working to get better because you're not eliminating them out of your yeah. mistakes. Well, we need you to suit up. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, can't, I can't suit up. I can't suit up. Now, Cowboys defense, uh, Dan Quinn, do you think that the, he was their out coach in, in certain games? Because you look at any team that was over 500, Emmett, and they seem to struggle. You know, the defense didn't seem to step up. But now here's Quinn going over to the co commanders. I don't know. I, I was kind of shocked, first of all, they took that. Um, and then, second of all, I was shocked how the defense never stepped up in a lot of these games, especially the pass rush and the secondary. Well, I thought Dan. I know you got to be careful because no, you're so no, close to organization. I, don't, I really don't have to be that careful. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Okay. They did this to themselves. Okay. I didn't do nothing but watch what I watched. Okay. I saw what I saw. Okay. The reality of the fact is, I thought Dan Quinn was right for the for the for our defense. Okay. I he was. Now, some of the key missing pieces there could have been the linebacker spot because you had a safety down in the box playing linebacker when the safety is not supposed to do that. That means we, our linebacker core was not. We didn't have enough backup. We didn't have enough guys to where we can stop the run. If I saw a safety in there playing linebacker on the offensive side, okay, yeah, there's that the whole yeah, yeah. change the pass <laughs> into a run game, and we need to go straight down. Yeah, here. yeah. But you know, Dan Quinn and our defense, they did solid, but it could have been better. Thank you. I was like, better could have been better. Uh, on that particular day when we got bounced by Green Bay, everything just absolutely sucked. Yeah, Everything. I know. Every offense, the, special team. Well, there was nothing to cheer about. Nothing I mean, to cheer about. The game. It was so. It was so depressing. Very. I had to leave the game. Oh, were you there? I left the game. Okay, because he did, he did a, a, a Instagram video after, and I didn't know if you were at home. I or was home by the time. Oh, oh, okay. car, I got home oh, by the time. Okay. That's, that's how early I left oh, the game. Okay. I knew it was over. You know, you just know a game, yeah. momentum. Right. It was. It was over. I right was away. at the game, and I left at the third quarter. At the first series or something like that in the third quarter, I think we threw a pick or a pick six for a touchdown. Yeah. And I and I, I, I got it. I, I'm out. I can't see them. Uh, Dak Prescott. Um, people are saying that he can't rise for the big games. Um, and I know, I mean, he's obviously a quarterback. We know he can get it done. What is it with Dak that seems to be, I, I see it in his face, it looks like he even gets a little rattled. I don't, I don't know. His field vision seems off. I, what do you see? I and mean, you know better than us. Like, what, what is it? You know, I think. Coordinators can make a player look great. They can also make a player look bad. Okay. I think. Okay. And Dak has to understand. I think he understands how to read coverages, but I don't know how much of the offense that he's in control of. Other words, can I check out of this and and run something up because I see what's happening up front? Because Troy uh, used to do that. Well, he did it, but he only did it when there was a check with me system. When they gave mm -hmm. him a check with me call. We would go into the game knowing that, okay, they, if you see this, then we're going to check to that. Or there's certain plays that we check to. And all based off of what the defense was doing. And so Dak should have the same ability because he has been in the league for a long time. So he's a veteran. He understands coverages. And they were practicing some of those things during the preseason when he was calling plays, yeah. I believe. So, yeah. Allowing that to happen gives him the ability to get on the football field and say, okay, I see certain things. Maybe this is not a good play. I need, Or I need to eliminate half the field and do all the things. That, right. That's yeah. the ability that you want your quarter to, quarterback to be at. Yeah. So I know we have something special to get to. And that's, you're, you're here promoting mm -hmm. something that we're so excited about. But before we get there, this Sunday, what are you expecting out of the game? I'm expecting a very good game. Um, both of these teams are – a solid, solid teams. Patrick Mahomes and that offense is amazing. But I love the 49ers. I love the way that they're built. I love the way that they play. I and this is coming from a cowboy, I everyone. Evan Smith. From a cowboy. <laughs> they're committed. And both of these teams are committed to run the ball. Yes. Both mm -hmm. of them are committed. They're committed to make sure that McCann get the ball in his hands yeah. at least 15, 20 times. Mm -hmm. They're committed to Pacheco running the rock, and he's going to run the rock hard downhill, not going to do a whole lot of shaking and baking. He's going to run your behind over. Very physical runner. That's what's going to happen. But that running is going to have to meet an opposition on the other side, which I think nine of the defense, whether it's Bosa on one side or Trey Young on the other side, 
linebackers in the middle. The Niners are a very physical football team, and I, and I want to see that physicality plays out, even if Patrick Mahomes take off running. Agreed. But do you, I know you don't want to probably say, but do, you know, us cheering both for the Niners. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I did that before the Cowboys. We're upset and we think we're disappointed, you know, how the Niners have been playing for the past couple of games. They're not playing how they play the regular season, though. The defense, Just, is, soft. The defense is right. not, they're not getting to the quarterback, Emmett, and no. the pass rush looks bad. No. Patrick will hold on to the ball a little bit longer than most. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he'll beat you with his arms or his legs. That yeah, scares me. Yeah, yep. exactly. And you should be scared because he's playing, he's playing football. He's not managing the game. He's playing football. I mean, he is. He understands situations and he take advantage of what he playing football. Yeah. Before we get to her, I've got to ask you, when you're winning so many championships like you guys with Dallas Cowboys, what motivates you to keep going and wanting to win more? Because the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes says he likes to play the chip on it or he likes to wear booing him. Mm-hmm. How did you guys rise to get to like, oh, we've already won it. You know, are you I hungry want, now? I want to be selfish. I don't want nobody else to win it. Okay. And if someone okay. else beat us to go win it, I'm mad. I'm hot. I may I may be I might go into a room and start crying if I'm watching someone else in the NFC championship. I, yeah. I feel this. Wow. There's several players that played that are Hall of Famers, just like yourself. The mindset, the passion. Mm-hmm. Is, and the chip on your shoulder. Is yeah, always feel back yeah. then than it is now. But that's yeah. just what I observe. I think they're a little softer. I, I, now. I never played a game to likes. Yeah. I played yeah. a game to dominate. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's talk Herdura. about Herdura. Yes, you, and can I right. have this in the morning? No, you can have this tonight. <laughs> you can have this today. This is fabulous. Look at this beautiful yeah. bottle. All right. Tell us about it. I've been working with Tequila Herdura for over 10 years now. Um, started in 2010, uh, representing this company. And they have, I've learned so much about the tequila business by just being around with them with 22,000 acres of 100% of blue agave down um, down in uh, Montatan area, 22,000 acres, and watching them go through the fermentation process. This is one of the fun. They're really involved in this process then. Well, I learned a lot about because they had a process that I can go see. And I've taken a number of different folks down to the Hacienda down in, in uh, Montatan. And can we well, go? Well, I'd love to go. Yeah, I, we, we can get y'all on there. We're going to have to talk to the man over there. I, I love this. Let me let me ask you. And the bottle is beautiful. I, I love tequila. I, lo- I love tequila. Okay. Is it better sipping on its own or is it better in a, as a mix? I like mine on ice. I don't. Okay. I don't, Thank you. I don't know. Give well, me a big rock. Okay. Ah. Okay. And, and I take either orange wedge in there. I like the double barrel reposado. That's that's the I right one reposado. to do it. And when you do the reposado, Get a little splash, of Grand Marnier. Ah, that's a nice yeah. little Super Bowl cocktail. Did, did yeah. you have? Did you have a say in the flavors? Well, my barrel, yes. Okay. Yes, I oh, blend. Your barrel. I, I got. Oh, a barrel. your barrel. Okay. Yeah, I got a brand out there with it has Emmett, Emmett's twenty two on it. Oh, and, and that was the barrel that I blended together that they're bottling and selling as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Where can we buy? This? Yeah, where can we get it? You can get us. Almost, it should be at your hotel okay. right now. I mean, you can get Total it. At, wine, it's Total everywhere. Wines okay. is everywhere. Perfect. It's everywhere. And I love Troy and Evan, the beer and the tequila. Yeah, I'm going to leave the beer to him. <laughs> I'm a tequila fan. <laughs> Thank you so much, Evan. We love so you. Much. Welcome back to the Weekly Pass here on Radio Row, Media Row, Las Vegas Super Bowl. It's Sunday. It's going quick, and we've got Jacob Durant. Stitch, I have been a fan for so long. So yes. when I got the e blast that you were coming on, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so exciting. I mean, he's the best cut man of all the time. Best. I the mean, best. the legend. And, you know, I actually, I kind of want to go back. A little bit sad news. Carl Weathers, I know you were yeah, close yeah. with him. Um, talk about your time on the Creed movie and what he meant to you. Yeah, well, he just gave me chills as we oh. brought that up, right? Uh, yeah, it was. It, yes, yeah, you just gave me <laughs> It just gave me chills, you know, when you brought that up. But yeah, of course, you know, he was an icon, you know, for the Rocky movie. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's 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 a heartfelt, you know, thing that he's gone. But I get to work with his son, Adonis, mm-hmm. and his legacy continues. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Yeah, and it, it's it's interesting. You have such you talk about a legend of face. This face, <laughs> when you yeah. see, I, I was so excited when he came in, and well, I thought, everyone knows Stitch. his face. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm so honored. I'm speechless. I got to be honest. Well, because so, we're big, we're big boxing fans. Yeah, so. big, well, that, that's good. But you know, the Rogers came by. Rod thought Woodson Carlos, thought you were yeah, Carlos, Carlos Santana. Santana. <laughs> I, I, I have other people, How many people have said that to you? Uh, oh. I, I took a picture see, I can see the difference, though. I, I, I don't I, think I, I, there's yeah, a yeah, difference yeah, yeah, as well. A little bit, but I uh, more like everything's almost. 
That's, oh, that's, that too. That, I can that see that, but most. still not the same. I can nah, still, if you know, you would know the difference, yeah, though. No, of course, but it's, uh, yeah, it happens. But yeah, Monday I was at the public workouts for the show we're doing uh, tomorrow, and this fan takes a picture, and then he said, man, I love your music. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Who do you think I am? <laughs> so well, it, it happens. It's so interesting. We were just talking, and Vegas, such a small world. And you're we here, know. in you live in Vegas. Yes. I love it. Okay. You follow my dreams. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And And how long have you been in Vegas? going on 29 years 29 wow. years what do you love most about the city uh, that is boxing it's the boxing capital of yeah. the world it's the only reason i came you know mm -hmm. i after the fights i'll go home you know i don't go when i came here i came to be disciplined no partying no drinking no gambling wow it's for boxing boxing only absolutely see so i Vegas. think about every time yeah. i'm driving through the strip i i look at it and i think wow i'm here you know and all your dreams came true all my dreams are coming true yeah coming so, true you saw more I, dreams I, you want to accomplish enough girl i'm telling you things have been happening so what, do you, what have you been working on lately? Well, you know, we're finishing up a documentary on my life. I wrote a couple of books from the fields to the garden. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a farm worker. Those are the fields. And the garden, of course, was my goal, oh, wow. which was Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, now you're talking about this and that. April the 20th, they're filming a documentary on my life based on that. April the 28th will be our final day of filming. That's when I get inducted into the National Boxing Hall of Fame. Oh, congratulations. This is exciting. So, yeah. And yeah. when you go to the UFC office here, your photos are everywhere. They're framed. Well, well they shouldn't be. Yeah, the, box, the, the yes. Boxing Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a pleasure. So yeah. when when is the documentary anticipated well, to be well, I Well, our final filming will be the 28th okay. of April. Okay. And then from there, they have like, they, they, just like they, they have 30 hours of filming. They've already broken down. Yeah. But the finale will be uh, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Wow. What now, a way to end the film, right? Now, Stitch, okay, I'm going to get a little controversial. See, I'm a boxing girl, and I even box. I spar. Like, I love it. I go to wild card, and, you know, I, you know wild yeah, card, sure, right? Sure. And I have a problem in the beginning of embracing UFC. I'll just be honest with you, because I was such a boxing girl, right? And now you're seeing, like, okay, HBO, gone. Yeah. That was how I grew up watching boxing. Right. Showtime, gone. So what is going on? What does boxing need to do to get the heavyweights back? What do they need to do to get it back and to compete with the UFC? That's a good question. You know, a lot of a lot of the boxing is going towards the social media events. Mm. The Jake Pauls, yeah. you know, Paul's KSI. Yeah. Now you got, you know, Saudi Arabia's coming in, they're putting yes. money. Yes, Dubai's doing a lot, yeah. So they're they're taking that route for economics. And and I can understand that the zone, you know, when the zone started, uh -huh. that was a good thing because they work on prescription. Mm -hmm. What better way to get people involved than to have these type of celebrity fights? Right. So that's where the sport is going. Yeah, you know, uh, that's where it's going. Are you a fan of mixed martial arts at all? Or well, I've, done hard all. I've done them all. Okay. You know, of course, but, you know, you're talking about not a big fan. You know, Dana fired me for speaking out about the Reebok deal. I did an oh. interview uh, when uh, they took all the sponsors away from everybody, and they went viral, and I did, like, 52 interviews in that week. And, and, that, that and was they, it, yeah. they let me go, and, you know, Dana ends up, shit in the stick and saying stitch and i were never friends when they interviewed oh. him about uh about me coming back uh, on on fox network the first yeah time, ah, stitch will never be back and then he blows it and saying stitch and i were never friends <laughs> but that just gives you the platform yeah, right now yeah, gives you more pr till, till now especially dana world, people stop me sure. and thank me for that yeah. i was in in uh dubai and one of the royal young royals says hey man you know, a lot of respect for you and yeah. for speaking up for the fighters. Yeah. For the fighters, you know. I love that. We were all making money. Fighters were making 50, 100,000 mm -hmm. a fight, and they took away with nothing, no consolation, going exclusive Reebok, and, you know, they lost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I'm a ring reporter for MMA, and it's hard, like, for me. I had to really learn a lot because I know the striking, the boxing, because yeah. I know boxing, but then the grappling and the wrestling. And But do you still think that the MMA is a great th for the sport, that there is some boxing in the MMA as well? Because for boxing fans, they still have something they can latch on to. Yeah, no, of course. You know, just combat sports. Yeah. All right. I'm a, I'm a combat sport fanatic, right? So yeah. How can I not say that? But there's other organizations outside of the UFC uh, where that are taking care of their fighters. A little bit better than the UFC. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with Francis Naguna when he left. You know, he literally signed with PFL, professional fighting, yes. with a stipulation that if I fight, my opponent needs to get a minimum of $2 million. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, for him to have the goal to come out, the, the balls to go out there and say that. Uh, so, bless his heart. So, boxing has been a huge part of Las Vegas over the years. Yeah. Over yeah. The years. Some of the most best memories uh, I look back Those on. iconic fights. It's yeah. crazy. Talk about sports and how you've seen it evolve in this city. Oh, it's been, oh, it's yeah. been tremendous. You know, just to, well, to see the Raiders here, you know, being 
from Oakland. It's kind of nice to see the Raiders come back over here. They followed me. Now the Oakland You're from the Bay? Yeah. From We're Oakland. from the Bay, too. Yeah. Bay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. lived in Oakland. Then I had a school kickboxing in Fairfield and I moved over here to follow my dreams. And uh, But, yeah. You know, that's a great question. She says, you know, the Raiders, yeah, the Golden yeah. Knights, how the A's are coming. Yeah, the A's are coming. It used to be a boxing gambling city. Now it's a sports it's yeah, amazing yeah. city. And now talking about basketball coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so. Even over entertainment, I'm, I want to yes, say. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, and, you know, somebody asked me a question about the Super Bowl. What do you think about being here? Here, they can handle it. Vegas is so good at doing what they sure. do that. It's this easy peasy. Yeah. Now, out of all the fights you've done, this is going to be really hard, but what was the hardest cut that you had to work on? The worst. Well, you know, I'll tell you the story. The first time I worked with Vladimir Klitschko. Okay, he, he Klitschko just brothers. Come, he had just come back from losing his world title. Yeah. And uh, Emmanuel Stewart, uh, he was doing a commentator. He said, hey, I want to talk to you about working with Vladimir. He goes like this. Which, yeah. So I called him and he said, Vladimir wants you to be his cut man. Uh, but the first fight I worked with him, he had just come back from losing his world title. He fought Deval Williamson. And this is Outdoor Caesars. Well, he gets he wins the first three rounds. Doesn't yeah. look great. But he won them. I, I always score fights as I work corners, right? Yeah. Well, in the fourth round, he gets uh, he gets dropped. So, okay, it's three, three rounds or two. I look at it. Well, in the fifth round, he gets an unintentional headbutt. And that big vein we wow. all have. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Oh, okay. yes. And I've worked on those four, uh, cuts before. But they bleed a lot. You can't stop them. Yeah. The, the vein is too big. So when him and Vitaly and Emmanuel Stewart came, I told Vitaly and Vladimir, I said, look, you got a back cut. You're winning the fight. I'm going to have the doctor stop the fight. So when the doctor came, she goes, well, what do you think? I go like this. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> I opened it up, went to the scorecards. He ended up winning the fight and became world champion for eight years. Wow. So months later, Jay Nady, which was the referee, we're doing another show. He says, Stitch, come here. Did you do what I thought you did? Did you open up that cut in front of the doctor? I said, I did. He goes, That's, that was ingenious. So, wow. That's, What's that's been your fight. most memorable fight? Well, that's one that of them. Out. Yeah, well, that, oh, God. Any scary. old school ones? Yeah, old school. Well, my first world title fight, I could tell you this, it was Tony the Tiger Lopez. Oh, my Tiger. God, I remember Tony the Tiger. Uh, yeah. Well, he fought Julio Cesar Chavez in Monterey, Mexico, I, in, in a baseball stadium. Wow. And baseball was always my game. Yeah. So I'm there, and I'm just telling these guys, I'm there, and I'm looking at the stadium. I'm thinking, wow, this is a dream come true. A dream. Wow. And I saw, I saw Cesar, Julio Cesar Chavez yeah. about six months ago at a, at a show, and I relayed that story to him. That the first fight I ever worked was against you. Oh, Gives okay. me a big hug. Yeah, Tony you know. the Tiger. I knew his sparring. Yeah. Do you remember his sparring partner, Aaron Stedman? He was a yes, yes, yes. That's yes, my yes. ex-boyfriend. Yes, he yes, went to senior yes. ball with me. Yes, 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 <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, hell, I'm oh, out my wrapped his hands one time. Yeah. He went to Chaparral. Yeah, yeah. And he's got in trouble for fighting in the streets. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow, and that's a, a very small world. Small world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you got to get going because we kind of like started late, but yeah, it's so it's so happy to have you. I mean, it's just an honor. I mean, you're just a legend in boxing. Thank you. And that's why I box because you know watching y'all. You're an inspiration. Yes. Well, I try to be, you know, growing up, yeah, listen, I ain't no different than nobody else. Neither are we, right? Yeah. But I always tell that people, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have been there, that line that we're scared to cross. Yeah. We don't cross it, we'll never get there. Yeah, I love right. it. Yeah. Right. Stitch, yeah. you've been awesome. Jacob Durant, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. We got to get some pictures. Daniel. We'll thank be you. back. Super Bowl. All right, so here we are. We are on Media Row. This is day two i gotta get my day straight actually day three this is right. wednesday i don't know where the week is going it's wednesday yeah and, i know and joining me i'm so honored it, safety for the pittsburgh steelers miles killebrew how you doing buddy oh i'm doing great i'm doing great i'm a little tired myself we just got in from the pro bowl uh-huh and uh i'm getting acclimated to the west coast but we're here and we're you know it's an exciting time so let's talk pro bowl because sure. I did watch you and I saw you yeah. catching all those footballs. Talk oh, about those goodness. games, those challenges. Is is there a serious competitive edge at the Pro Bowl? Uh, yes. Yep. Yes. Contrary to popular belief, you know, we can't just turn off our competitive no. nature. So we want to compete in all of it. And I found out actually that day that I was going to be participating in that punt catch. And I, I got to tell you, I've never done that before in my life. You're kidding. I've never done that. I thought it was a typo. When I saw my name on the list, I was like, oh, surely they... They meant something else, or maybe I'm supposed to be launching the balls to the guys. I didn't know what I was doing, but they said, yeah, not only are you doing this, um, but you're first. And so <laughs> that like, is okay. crazy. So maybe they're auditioning you because they ate you as a punt oh, returner man. as well. Yeah, I know. Is that something you're up for? Listen, I was just trying not to drop the balls that we started with. I was like, what am I doing? Uh, 
they explained what I was going to be doing. And right before I go out there, they're like, hey, by the way, no pressure. There's a there's a female TikToker who just got seven of these things the oh night before. So oh, no good pressure. Luck. You got no it. No pressure. The female <laughs> TikToker. Oh, you know that blew like, up on oh, social I media. Gotta at least catch at least one of these things. And I got to meet her. She was really she was really a pleasant person. But the whole experience was just hands down phenomenal. I mean, it was a great time. So here you are. I know you need to get your rest, your beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, so thanks for right. being on there. And now we're, we've got Super Bowl week right yep. here in Las Vegas. Oh, yep. You have a little tie to Vegas. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm from here. I'm raised, raised Las Vegas. So, I mean, this is just beyond the scope of what I ever imagined would be in this city. I mean, I was here before we had any professional sports teams and 10 so years ago was oh my goodness ago? yeah i mean my whole <laughs> life i was i grew up and i was just like man like there's no one to really root for you know and um and so now to see not only a professional sports team here but now we're hosting super bowls i it's mean crazy. this is unreal i'm it's super elated super excited for the city and uh just really all of the energy that it, that that is coming in and people are seeing las vegas and they're like wow this is a beautiful place and it's a place i've called home for so long it's crazy. So I've been in Las Vegas to, I, I moved here to co-host Monday Night Football with oh, ABC, yeah. the other the other network. But, um, and to see Vegas evolve, we we had, we did have high-end retail. Right. We had amazing gaming properties. Food was always great. We had no performing arts. Obviously we didn't have a baseball team. Now we have a pro baseball team coming mm -hmm. here and now football. So I agree with you. Yeah. The stamp on Las Vegas with professional sports is, it's real. Yep. This is a hub. This is a place people want to come to. And this is a, uh, this is a place that people are getting excited about. And it's, you know, it's fun to see. See, this is what's so cool about Radio Row. You never know who's going to walk by yeah. and it's so <laughs> candid. It's awesome. How you doing, sir? <laughs> so, oh, that's oh, perfect. That's yeah. amazing. That's We've got a special guest that just joined us. So let's talk, first of all, let's talk about the season. Sure. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers had a, you, you guys had a great season, especially yep. there at the end. I know Coach Tomlin. I always love to to watch his strategy and admire his leadership. What are your thoughts on your season as a team, as an individual? What are you looking forward to after the sure. offseason? I'll start with the team aspect. Um, it has been just such a great. Uh, it was it was a really cool year of just developing and uh, our relationships in the locker room. And the camaraderie was something that I, I haven't really seen a lot of in the league. And so we weren't having immediate success. Um, you know, we had a lot of questions on offense. We had a lot of injuries on defense. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, of ups and downs throughout the entire year. Um, I always had confidence that we would be able to persevere through it because we have amazing leadership at the helm mm -hmm. in, in Coach Lynn. And like I just mentioned, our – individual relationships collective relationships were so strong and so i just knew that we were not going to um falter and so it was really exciting to see at the end of the year how we did have not just a winning season but i mean we were going into the playoffs absolutely we had a chance at, at a chance at this thing and and that was cool to see and it, i expected it because again those two things we have great leadership and we had great team camaraderie it's so important to to establish and identify that team culture. Yes. And when you have a great leader like Coach Tomlin mm -hmm. and you come together, that, that's really the basis of it all. What's it like in the locker room with Coach Tomlin? I always, you know, he seems like this quiet, cool guy on the sideline. But then I always wonder, what's his pregame motivational speech? What is he saying to you at halftime? He just seems like that energetic type oh, coach. He is a motivator of all motivators. And he gives you space as as men to kind of see what kind of man you want to be. Um, and I'm not just talking football, you know, he, he gives you all of the resources to develop you as a man off the field. Um, but he's very specific on what he demands from you on the field, you know, and he wants you to be a professional at your craft. You have to perform and you have to uh, contribute uh, to the pile. And so if you can, ma if you can manage that, if you can have something that say, okay, I bring this to the table, then he will give you complete latitude to be whatever type of man you want to be off the field. And I think that's something that comes with responsibility. You know, it's not, you know, you start to see a lot of personalities pop up on the Steelers that maybe other teams wouldn't deal with, but that's just because coach Tomlin says, Hey, listen, I don't care necessarily what type of person you want to be. I'm more concerned with what, what kind of man you're going to be while you're here, what kind of man you're going to be to your family. And are you contributing to us winning? And that and that's it. 
interesting. Now, the AFC is so competitive. It is. It, oh, it, my goodness. It mind blows me, the teams. Especially you know? the North for us. Oh, and, my goodness. And the NFC used to be, obviously, you know, the powerhouse when it came to that right. competitive edge. Now, the AFC is so strong. What was your most memorable game this year? Oh, my Why? Goodness. Probably the Ravens, the first first time around um the second time you know there's this whole thing of you know are they going to play guys are they not you know whatever but the first time it was everybody it was it was good on good and um it was an exciting game for me personally because i blocked the punt that game absolutely and i did watch that yeah that was, it was really fun and um it was just an electric atmosphere and i i really enjoyed that game division rival the ravens it's always a good game how's the how's the steeler fan base the Steeler fan base, they, get is, wild, uh, don't they? they travel well. They travel well. They travel well. You know, I felt like we always had a presence at every game. Um, they are diehard. They're very familiar with our history, with the team's history. And uh, they're used to winning. Now, you have a little bit of downtime. You have an offseason, so yes. that's good. So yeah. now it's a good time to get mentally back, to, mentally together, physically, yep. get healthy. What are you doing during the offseason? Resting. Resting, spending a lot of time with my girls, um, you know, and uh, I do spend some time talking to kids, you know, visiting my old college, my alma mater high school and uh, trying to work with kids. But I, I you just got to rest. I got to pull away from it. You know, that way I'm full tilt, ready to go, ready to send it when the uh, season comes around. Amazing. So now here we are in Vegas. We got a big week. We're here. All right. We got a big week. So shifting shifting gears a little bit. Let's We're looking it. at the Kansas City Chiefs Yep. Uh, and the San Francisco 49ers. And 49ers. And being on the defensive side, I have to ask you, you know, Niners started the season out strong defensively. They still have an amazing defense, but Casey's defense has really stepped up. They have. They have. I think it's a testament to their experience. You know, it takes a lot of it takes someone who's been there before to understand what it takes to push this long into the season. I mean, I've been done for three weeks, four mm -hmm. weeks now. You know what I mean? And and we made the playoffs. Absolutely. Um, and so to have this length of a season and to be kicking it in at the right at the right time, that takes experience. And that's something that KC has. Um, the 49ers have it as well. They're steeped in a long tradition of winning. Um, they have the history of of uh of winning out there so so they know it too but kc most recently has been doing it so they know when to kind of turn it on and i'll tell you patrick mahomes that's he's a talent that's a that's a he's talent a right there talent. um yep. let's talk about brock purdy for a second um sure. brock purdy is just an amazing human being um have the privilege of meeting and speaking with brock he's very yeah. grounded uh he has a lot of naysayers out there as you know you hear yeah. people saying He's a game manager. Look where he's taken this team. Any thoughts on that? I've always found that to be kind of perplexing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little confused by that. Uh, just being a player myself, I, I can't help but to, I can't help but to kind of dissect that and to say, okay, well, what do you mean by that? What does a game manager mean? Don't you want mean? a game yeah, manager, like he's right? Not, I mean, he's right. a quarterback. You don't. That's literally what they do. They Absolutely. manage. Absolutely. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand the, um, I don't really get into, you know, when people talk negatively about players, but I will say his case is confusing to me because mm -hmm. on paper, he's been doing great. Um, stats you know, are amazing. The stats are amazing. His, the wins are there. Uh, maybe because he's not necessarily like a super flamboyant personality that huh? people aren't necessarily drawn to, but maybe that's why they're trying to quantify him as just like this game manager to justify type. or the last round last yeah, pick but i don't get it i really don't get it I'm because perplexed. they've been winning i mean here they are in the super bowl and he's been the quarterback so i mean you, you have to give credit where it's due you know and i've just recently been watching some of his interviews i mean he's a really grounded grounded individual he's religious he's you know he, he has his head on his shoulders i'm not saying i'm rooting for one team or the other but i'm i will say this I think he's getting a kind of a weird rap in the media. Absolutely. It's very strange. It's very strange. What's it like from your point of view, your your side of it, competing against the Kansas City Chiefs and that offense? Well, yeah. I mean, like, what are the like challenges? we were just talking about. I mean, they are – it almost feels like they're playing backyard ball, you know, when you got Kelsey and, and Mahomes together. It almost feels like they're just kind of – you take this away, well, we'll just – go where you're not type of deal. I think it's very good. You know, they play that West Coast offense, but I mean, this West Coast offense was really 
started up yep, with absolutely. Uh, the 49ers, 49ers uh, with his dad. Absolutely. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of he interesting to see coach. these two teams doing it. Amazing coach. And he had the push to work with dad. Uh, sure. Mike Shanahan. Yeah, Shanahan, and we won yeah. our Super Bowl rings oh, with yeah. that in '94. Not to date myself, but isn't that fascinating? It's crazy. Though, and here it's you crazy. got two teams who have essentially perfected this offensive style, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's going to be a lot of fun. But there's nothing that Kansas City can do that the 49ers can't also do. That's why it's interesting. Absolutely. You know, they both have very similar play style with, uh, again, very similar pieces. Right? You got the you got the quarterback tight end connection, right? You got kid on one side, you got so it's, it's very interesting. It's Amazing. very interesting. Two side. Very equivalent, I think, yep. on the offense. Yep. All right. So Sunday's game, who has the edge, in your opinion? <sighs> and see, that's what I'm saying. I, They're so equal. Who has, right? who has the edge? I yeah, I don't think I can say um at least I don't really have enough to back up a claim to say one has as an edge over the other right now. It'll be a good game. I think it'll be a great game. And these are two teams that people love to hate for you know they either love them or they hate Absolutely. them there's no in between and so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out well thank Miles. Oh, thank you course. so Thanks much for, for being me. here yeah, thank you. i hope you have an amazing off season thank you so much uh, and look forward to watching you next season oh it's going to be fun thank you for having me thanks again Back here at Radio Row in Las Vegas, here at Dahani Jones. Thanks so much for stopping by. No, I appreciate you all having me. I feel honored to be next to two Super Bowl winners. <laughs> yes. I mean, dang, I see these rings. I need, I need one, too. I mean, I have, uh, I guess, a Super Bowl runner-up rings. but That's fine. But you all have some fancy we rings. We do. Yeah, your time will come. My time will come. I don't know. I mean, at least I own a team or go work for a team. For the front office, yeah, work, coach. Know, go front office or a coach you know yeah. with antonio now at las vegas we might have a spot there we go there we go cool, you right? never know. Know. I'm with vegas hang out for a little bit <laughs> she like lives here in vegas how you like it? how huh? you like in vegas i like vegas i like the fact that i can see a mountaintop with snow rather rather close the only problem i have with vegas is sometimes it floods and i don't understand the water system in vegas you know so if we get too much rain then people are going to be surfing in the streets and traffic is going to be slowing down. <laughs> it, it's crazy. No, I mean, it's right we're, we're in the hotel. It's dripping. Right. Like there's water coming through the ceiling yeah. in some places. It was flooding when we first landed. Thank yeah. you yeah, so Monday. much. Monday. Right. Yeah. And you got delayed on the tarmac, didn't you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, exactly. that's, what I'm that's the only issue with Vegas. Everything else is perfect. The Super Bowl brought the rain in for whatever reason. Because usually there's a rain here. here in the desert. So, but well, maybe. and when it does, it's never a, a good thing. There's another place in actually in Dubai, the Bujar Arab. And that, that hotel, anytime it rains, the whole hotel leaks, and it's a seven-star hotel. You know, it's amazing, the <laughs> dichotomy between desert and rain. But anyways, Donna, I digress. I want to get right into Michigan, you know, winning the natty. Harbaugh, people are saying he jumped ship. Is he jumping ship, or are you? can you call it jumping ship if you've won it all? Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't call it jump ship. Okay. Um, I would say that he got what he wanted. Yeah. I wouldn't say that he jumped ship. I think there was three... Three things that essentially happened. Harbaugh got us the job that he wanted. The university got our national championship we deserved. You know, and Coach Moore got the head coach position. So I, I, I look at it as like a win-win across the board. Um, and I'm happy for everybody, you know. It's like everybody's been pulling for their thing that they've wanted over this amount of time. But is he now. leaving that Michigan in a bad situation? He's taking some of the coordinators? Now, that's a different discussion. Okay. Right? I don't know – what contractual thing contractual things each coach has and if they're allowed to obviously they can because they did now i would say uh if i was the head coach i don't know if i would necessarily leave the school like that but you know we all make our choices and these these coaches that have been at mission decided to leave us the choice can't for them to stay there because they might have wanted the head coaching job but they didn't get it right yeah. and so they were saying to themselves maybe because I didn't get the head coaching job, I'm going to go with Harbaugh. Now my path through the NFL might be to another head coaching position. Mm -hmm. You know, you understand. Everybody wants to be at the top of the mountain, right? And so if some way, shape, or form you can get more quickly to the top of your own personal mountain, then you're going to go, you're going to go that way. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Harbaugh for a minute. Obviously, the new role in, in, um, with the Chargers. What do you anticipate those first 30, 60, 90 days? No idea. Do you see? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> No idea. I mean, 
what what type of changes what what might he make? I mean, obviously he's bringing in new offense, new defense coordinator. I'm not going to expect him to do anything with the quarterback position. He's going to get a whole new facility. I think it's a 250 million dollar new facility. So he's got money to spend or money to burn, and he's got cap space in order to fill. Called up different people. I don't know. May, he might draft someone from Michigan. Who knows? Um, but you know, it's um. I always say, you know, we're living in this, uh, you know, not we're, we're no longer living in the dial ups, you know, in the dial up world. Right. Where we have time to wait Absolutely. for the computer to come online. We're on there right now. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, in today's society, everything is like right now. So whatever he does, he's, he's got to do it quickly so that everybody sees a return on their investment. I mean, he's getting paid, I don't know, 16, 17, 18 million, million. a year. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. You better win. Right. <laughs> Speaking of winning, how do you think being a college coach, I mean, he's already coached in the NFL with the 49ers, but translating that, because a lot of players I spoke to under Haba at the 49ers said they didn't like the way he coached. They said he was too much. Uh, let them be just, a player. Uh, Discipline air was too much. You know, it's like the saving. Exactly. How do you think that's going to translate over with the Chargers? I mean, Justin Herbert's excited for it there, but do you see that being able to translate, you know, with, it's been about, you know, 10 plus years. How, well, how's that going to work? Well, either works or doesn't. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I would say, you know, because of the fact he's coming off a national championship, people are going to look at him in a different different way. They're going to apply that deference and give him a certain type of respect where he's going to be known as the guy that knows how to get it done, right? I think when he went to the 49ers, he was in sort of a unique position where people didn't know him and his style. Now it's all out there. You yeah. see how he's changed an organization, how he's changed yeah. a team. You know, and I think that also uh, some of the people that he's bringing along with him are also pretty cool and Michigan coaches aside, which are obviously great people in, in my book, but you know, you have my, my old coach, Marvin Lewis that's coming along, yeah. you know, and I think that he, he, no, no, Marvin Lewis is going to Antonio Pierce. Sorry. Different. I got, I got stuck on the Raiders. I saw a Raiders jacket go past <laughs> and I was like, Oh, uh, I'm thinking about my coach. No. So no, but he's bringing the people along that are set the tone you know, at the chargers. And I think it's gonna be fine, but we got to give him time so that he actually can build the team the way that he wants to. Right. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Antonio Pierce. I cannot My man, tell you, Antonio Pierce. <laughs> I cannot tell you this man, how he has been just taking this team. He is a oh, player coach yeah. and he's brought so much dynamo to this franchise. Yeah, I'm, I'm, wa I'm watching all the different Raiders jacket walk, Max walk around. Max Crosby hanging yeah. out. Yeah. And, I, and, I, right? and I apologize for getting distracted real quick. I saw <laughs> okay. the, There's I a saw lot to be distracted saw, by here. Radio Row. Raiders Nation walk around and my, my brain started to flip just a little bit, but I'm excited for him. I'm excited for all the different, as I was saying before, the people that he's bringing in because I think that the energy that he's going to bring to Las Vegas and the Davis family, you know, they've uh, they've had a great history, if you will, of giving people opportunities. And I think Antonio Perez is the right choice. Yeah, the, the players just love yeah. working with him. And uh, that's he, an operative it, word with not for. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and as a and as a as a coach these days, if you have that expertise, Expertise, and then you also have that leadership quality. You also have that engagement with the players. You know, they feel like working for a company. They'll feel like they're 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 playing a, a game with their teammate, Absolutely. and that's what you need now more more so than ever. Bonnie, Joe, and Tanya here on Radio Row in Las Vegas. Here with Dahani Jones. Now, Dahani, I want to talk about why you're here. Cafe Momentum. Yeah. This is the. Fourth year here at the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's amazing, right? So tell our listeners and viewers well, everything about it. Well, you know, you, you, we we just talked about team aspect. We talked about you know Chargers. We talked about you know players, coach over at uh, at the Raiders, right? Team, right? And a lot of these uh, justice involved at risk youth that are coming out of the juvenile justice system, they need their team, right? They need their coach. And I think you know when I think about Cafe Momentum, by the way, it's over there by FanDuel and. Series XM between 11 o'clock and, and 1 o'clock today. Okay. A lot of the youth will be walking around. You know, they found their team in Cafe Momentum. Organization started back in uh, in Dallas, Texas, and now has expanded even to be in places like Denver, if you can kind of follow it, right? It's following the different NFL mm -hmm. teams. And so Stand Together, Standing Foundation, the Players Coalition, and the NFL all support 
um, all these young people that are trying to get back up on their feet, right? And they're finding a, a, a better way to move through the system, right? Another way to find their way into a system where they're able to kind of learn, right? So they go into this restaurant, it's a 12, it's a 12 week program, a 12 month program of which they also get paid. Right? And so they're learning how the restaurant industry works. You know, all of us have a uh, strategy, we all have a system, we all have certain levels of, of wire that have uh, added to our success as an individual. Right, and so it's the same thing. Cap momentum allows you to become rewired, right? So you you know you work as a, you know whether it be a bus boy, bus girl, bus person, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're on the line. You understand food. Keep moving right? up. Keep moving up. Keep moving up. And most important thing, what happens? People believe in you. Yeah. Right? You feel empowered. You got that whole, confidence. Confidence. Your your whole mindset essentially changes, and all of a sudden because you realize that someone believes in you, you start believing in yourself. Oh yeah. Well, who believed in you? Well, you know, speaking of that, both of y'all. <laughs> but growing up, but growing up, like yeah, I love, yeah. I love that, that Cafe Momentum is offering that um, program. I come, my family owns fine dining restaurants. Mm. I have so much respect for people Where? in the hospitality industry. Where are these restaurants? New Orleans and what? Houston. Brennan, you got it. Pair up here. Restaurant. You got family discount. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody asks that. Yep, yeah. we can talk. Like no, Online. no discounts for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I've seen workers come in and mm -hmm. it's so interesting some of those that come into the workforce mm -hmm. and the mindset nowadays mm -hmm. so it's great that you're starting this generation at such a young age and taking the appropriate steps moving up and, and getting them to believe in themselves yeah, we want we want we don't want these kids to go back to where they were before you know the recidivism rates are very very low we don't want these kids to go back into the system we want, the, we want them to find a better path and a, and a better journey in life and be able to contribute yeah it's for me the whole philanthropic side of mm -hmm. football is just as important, if not more, right? Mm -hmm. when, when you're an athlete and it's post football, what are you doing to make a difference? Yeah, it is. You're making a difference, paying it so forward. Thank you for that. No, thank and you. downtown boxing gym, I box. I know, I, I, but I actually have One, a nice, and I, and I got a nice jab. Got yeah, nice I've, jab. I've got a nice jab. Oh, you should yeah. see my jab, my uppercut, yeah. my combination. I got quick feet, quick hands. So they are, they are your friends here. Like, what, what are they, how are they involved in the charity? So, so it's different, right? So Stand Together works with many different nonprofits and always trying to solve some of the country's biggest challenges. Cafe Momentum being one of them, Downtown Boxing Gym being another one that's based in Detroit and Kylie Sweeney, um, who's an amazing player, is the one that's essentially leading that. Okay. And that organization works with young people that come in after school. And when they come in after school, you know, they try to find different ways um, to kind of refine their skills and, and be able to kind of find things that allow them to believe in themselves. Yeah. Just like momentum. I'll be a completely different, um, completely different worlds, but, but both of them being incredibly successful, being incredibly mindful, as I mentioned before, cafe momentum, you know, the recidivism rates are incredibly low with downtown boxing gym. All these kids graduate, right? So it's all about meeting people where they are, mm -hmm. no matter what you've been through, giving you that chance so that you can ultimately believe in yourself. Fantastic. Do you box? Of course. Oh, okay. I gotta Carl watch out for that ring. That might hurt if you hit me in the face. <laughs> Carl Weathers. He just passed away, oh, and that made yeah. me really sad. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Well, Dahani, thank you so much. Thank you. Always thank enjoyable you. to see hey. you here on the row. Are they online now or no? Yeah. Oh. Say hi. <laughs> on that side, camera one and camera We're in the two. same place. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for all you're doing to give back, and I so appreciate much. it. Thank you. We'll be back. One in four of our active duty military, one in four, not one in six, like somebody keeps quoting me, uh, in our active duty military are food insecure. Then you put in our food population, especially here in, in uh, 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 Vegas, Three Square, the food bank here, one of the largest supporters of our military veterans with food. So when you buy one of these bags from heritagebags.com, we get 50% of the Robert Irvine Foundation. I love it. And then we can go and feed people. Heritagebags.com. Yep. Yep, I just made sure. I love it. Oh, sorry, which is gear dot com. Sorry. Correction, we'll we'll fix that. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I'm look, I'm so excited. Is, can, can I just tell you, this is okay. We all know him as Restaurant Impossible. Yeah. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I am blown away at what you're doing. Not just in the community, but but it's also life. a spin to always give back, though. Every, That's what I yeah. love. That's the best part of it. Protein bars. You're a marketing. Machine. Well, this is a great and giving back, he thinks about that. So what I we love. have eleven companies, ladies, and eleven, Only 11. Com eleven companies, <laughs> six thousand employees, 
and a portion of every company that we own goes into our foundation, just like your, you do your dog shell, mm -hmm. um, dogs, wheelchairs, yes. um, reuniting the brave. I'm taking uh, 300 veterans to Normandy in June. Can we go? Um, we can, we oh can, my we gosh, can talk I after this. I would love to go. Uh, and then we fly straight to Scotland after that to do a big 56 mile march with a thousand coalition wounded. And we're taking 56 miles. 56 miles in 24 hours. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Wow. But, uh, yeah, everything we do has a charity component. Yes. Always for our men and women that wear the cloth my nation and our first responders. Yeah, that's what I so, love. Because people forget. You know, I, I was amazed uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was in, in uh, Brooklyn. Got to go to two firehouses. And I didn't realize that when they go on shouts or go to a fire, mm -hmm. they end up paying for their own food. Yes. Oh, $20 a day. Do you know, do you know how much I, I go to firehouses and bring them food all the time? Because they, no one realizes that they have to produce Absolutely. their own food. They have to go grocery shopping I, out I of their own pocket. I can't believe it. I've never heard of it. Yeah. In England, we don't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. because they're, I mean, I, I cannot respect them enough right. for all their work. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a cop's daughter, so it's like I like that yeah. you incorporate. So you'll responders. get a kick, get a kick out. It's not that it's, it's a kick, but a couple of weeks ago in Pittsburgh, a detective was shot on the job. Within literally two hours, we had aid to his family through Josh Shapiro, the governor. I mean, it's pretty amazing, uh, and that's the, that's what this does. this is what that. media does. Thank it you. helps get the word out. RobertIrvineFoundation.org, HeritageGear.com. Get it right. Um, so we're doing good things. I just came back from Israel off, uh, off the uh, Did you? Um, Eisenhower. Uh, on wow. our way to Israel. Sorry, no, I wasn't wow. in Israel, but on our way to Israel. Um, with our soldiers, sailors, airmen. Um, Cuba just before Christmas. And at Christmas, Australia, uh, New Zealand. So, yeah, we got to travel a little bit. Yeah, that's cr so incredible. Crazy. How many days are you actually home? Well, I'm on, the road, <laughs> I'm on the road 345 days a year. Uh, Wait, seriously? Yeah, 150 just wow. for the military. So I'm home between 8 and 11 days a year, literally. Are those holidays? So, no, normally, the holidays normally, the normally, <laughs> normally, but, you know, since we pulled out of Iraq and Afghanistan, mm -hmm. you think we have, we're still there we're with still special there. operations guys there, and yeah. whatnot. Uh, but we're normally there for Christmas doing yeah. something. And uh, so I went to Australia to see the uh, Australian Navy and, and Army and some Marines. Yeah. About there, so. And that's a, I don't know, it's some sad news, but I did, you know, 19 USO tours, uh, two of them with Toby Keith. Yeah. And we just lost Tobe. Um, great, and what do you human. say about a patriot like Toby, who yeah. did so much to get back like yourself? Yeah. Great human being. Yeah. I, it's so funny because I know a lot of the generals that were in theater at that time uh, mm -hmm. that came out and said amazing things about him and yeah. uh, never met the guy, but. Uh, you didn't. I thought you no, might have crossed paths. Never, okay. never. I did. I've done. Uh, almost 30 USO yeah, tours. Yeah, you've done a lot. And then we've done our own. We do a lot of our own tours okay. now yes. with Armed Forces Entertainment. Mm -hmm, they do, um, yeah. And what's great, what's great about USO, David Goldfein, General Goldfein, yep. the, the chief of the Air Force, just became uh, chairman of the board there, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, you know, I we think our world with our changed. friend, Gary, Gary yeah. Sinise. I think our, our world has changed a lot in, our, in the giving space, but we're all after the same dollar. I'm not building houses and giving houses. I think that period's gone. We're feeding them, we're educating them, we're, we're doing the nutrition for them, just like these athletes that you see walking yeah. around here. And I think that's that's like my goal is to educate young people, the people that join our military, and those that are actually in the military. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yeah. Absolutely. Whatever I can do out here in Las Vegas to support you, count me out. All right, I want everybody to watch this to buy a bag. HeritageGear.com, and you got to give a big shout it. out to Kirk Cousins, and you Brett said Favre, and uh, Brian Erlacher. Good job, because I always get it wrong. Brian's going to kill me tonight. Yeah, Erlacher. I keep it's an English thing in me. I just yeah. Brian Erlacher. Erlacher. So they're all behind this too. So uh, great. But Brian's great. done some USO tours. He's very patriotic, uh, and that's that's great. And who else? And also Brett Kirk, Bob. Oh, and Kirk Cousins. And yeah, Kirk he, Cousins. Kirk Cousins. His wife. I don't know if you know this. You probably do. The dogs on deployment. They were too like overrun. They had, so he, they now are taking in and fostering dogs of the men and women that are getting deployed. Well, I didn't Did you know, know that? that. That's amazing. Yeah. So I got to make a talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Because we've just put our first dog on an aircraft carrier. You did the, on the uh, USS Eisenhower. Oh. We have a dog. Oh, well, you just came back from there. Yeah, okay. we have a dog on there now, and we're starting to see what a morale booster it is oh, it for the ship's is. company. Oh, uh, absolutely! And the USO just opened their first USO at sea on there, so they get to go in and play games and do all this oh, uh, and talk to the family. So it's pretty cool. Oh, 
Well, I'm going to Germany with you in June. Oh, you are? Yes, I yeah. just were just announcing that here live on there the show. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you have big suitcases, right? Yeah. And then we only need seven suitcases. Yeah. I, she takes three each. Yeah. And then it's one for shoes, one for That's makeup, one for. Oh my God, you're all the you same. You should have seen mine. All you women, be... we love you, oh. but there's a weight limit. I had to, I 82 had... pounds. And they told me I had to, I, so they charged me more, Robert, on my yeah, way here because it's, it's too heavy. It's supposed to be 70 pounds. They told me 50, and they said I had 32 pounds overweight. And they said, can you take 32 pounds? You don't pounds travel off? economy class. None yeah. of you. <laughs> Neither <laughs> of you. I thought I was bad. Yeah. Jill's a whole no. Level when it comes to they told me I was overweight, so I had to pay $100. Well, it's different when you're on the tour because you use your military aircraft. You can put oh, as much as you I want on there. I put so much, yes, and they don't care. They don't care. Well, yeah. there you go. Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate Robert, you thank both. Thank you so much for what you do for our men and women. Uh, you know, coming from a military family, and it, it means a lot that there's someone with your high profile giving back and also be able to tell others of the younger generation, this is how you do it. We are here. We are afraid of because of these men and yeah, women. Absolutely. And don't forget that. Absolutely. Okay. Well, don't forget, heritagegear.com. Yes. And these two amazing young ladies. Thank you very much. Yay. Stay tuned for these guys. Yeah, we'll be back.